Okay, now I'm going to go to the, uh, the passage here to demonstrate how to uh, write a sermon. So you all can learn to do it. Uh, let me uh, open a window first. Romans 8.29 For whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, this he also called. Whom he called, this he also justified. And whom he justified, this he also glorified. Okay, now, this passage is all about God's nature and grace. But we can still find out the law behind that and how people uh, don't take advantage of these promises. Okay, now here, uh, let's look at this passage. And uh, first, for whom he foreknew. That means God knew us ahead of time. He knew us in eternity. He already knew who we are and he knew you know have he had a relationship in his heart with us already and he predestined he has a plan he elected us he has so this is the predestination of God that he predestined the Christians that they can be conformed to the image of his son that he will uh, they will have uh, live out the image of Jesus Christ that they will live like Jesus, have the life and the joy and the peace of Jesus and the love of Jesus, that he might be the firstborn, that Jesus will be the firstborn among many brethren. There are many brethren of Jesus, they, that there will be many people following Jesus in the kingdom of God. Moreover, whom he predestined, this he also called. So those who predestined to be saved, he elected. He also called them by the Holy Spirit by the word of God to send to, uh, to, to the world to, through Christians to bring people to believe in Jesus. And whom he called, uh, this he also justified. Justify means he will um, call them righteous. He will give them the, righteous, the rope of righteousness, that he'll give us righteousness. And whom he justified, this he also glorified. Now, this passage also talk about, talk about the glorification of Christians. This is not talking about future only. It talks about now, that we can live out the glorious nature of God, that we can live out His joy and peace and love and forgiveness. These are His glory, the manifestation of His glory, that we can live out this glory and have the strength and authority of Jesus Christ, that we can have authority to heal the sick to bring blessings to people. So, so here it shows a series of plans of things that God wants to do to us, that, he got, that God wants to do all these things to us, that He already knew us ahead of time and He predestined us, He elected us to be conformed to the image of His Son. So the election is not just salvation, but also will live out the image of Jesus Christ that he'll be the firstborn and then we are his brethren. And then whom he predestined, he also called us. He called us with the Holy Spirit and his word. And those he called, he also justified. He called us righteous. He made us righteous. And then he also glorified us. So this passage talks about many things of God that how he sees that we are precious and important. And He has a wonderful plan. He has a wonderful plan in our life. 
Okay, interpretation of 829, Romans 829. God knew us ahead of time. He predestined, he planned for us to be conformed to the image of Jesus. That he already has a plan ahead of time. Jesus is the firstborn among all of us. When he predestined us, he also called us to believe in him. And when he called us, he also called us righteous or justify us, to make us righteous. And who, when He justify us, He also glorify us. He make us glorious. So he will, be, he will do a series of favorable actions for us. So He, is, he will do a series of uh, actions for us. So the theme, let us receive and live out God's election and grace. So this is the theme here I write. Let us receive and live out God's election. He has elected us and His grace for us. He has planned His grace for us. So let us live that out. A. So here is the problem of many Christians. Many Christians don't realize that they were chosen by God in eternity. They don't treasure their lives. They look at themselves from a human perspective. They think that they are good for nothing and they don't live as chosen children of God. These are all the lies of Satan. So many Christians, they look down upon themselves. They think that they're useless. They didn't, they didn't realize that they are chosen by God. God has a wonderful plan in their life and they are precious. They are very, very precious and God wants to use them greatly. God wants to raise them up to a high level. But many Christians don't realize that. And they live like, you know, uh, very miserable people. They live without joy and peace and strength and they always look at the bad things. They look at themselves from a human perspective. For instance, they, they have problems. They would just look at the problems and say, I'm, I'm not like other people. I cannot do anything good. I'm good for nothing. So they look at the weaknesses of themselves. Then they will go into more weaknesses. But if they look at God and say, God can change me. You know, when I was young in my family, there was a lot of yelling. That uh, At that time, I, I did not have much courage. When I talked when I was very young, very often I did not finish my sentence. The reason is that I thought people were not listening to me, so I did not finish my sentence. So, but later, you know, when I became a Christian, I realized that I'm precious and I changed that habit. And that habit was changed instantly when I started to do evangelism. Immediately, God gave me the courage, the wisdom uh, to preach the gospel uh, fluently. When I started to do evangelism, immediately, my speaking changed because God has a plan to use my life. Now, if I look at my weaknesses when I was young, then I would not have strength. But when I look at God, I had a lot of strength. So I hope we all say that, wow, we are precious, we are precious, we are precious in God's sight, we are very important people. So we want to make the best use of our life because we were chosen by God and God has a plan to save us and call us righteous and glorify our lives. But many people don't realize that. So this is like an intro that many people don't realize that. They were chosen by God. And then God's nature and grace. First, time is all in the hands of God. A thousand years is like one day in God's eyes. So God, in His eyes, one thousand years is just one day. Now, this passage, Psalm 90, verse 4, For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. So a thousand years is like yesterday. It's just like one day. And like a watch in the night, the one hour in the night. And then in Second Peter 3, 8, with the Lord one day is as one, a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So with the Lord, one, thousand year, one year is like one thousand years. He can look into one day as a long time that shows how we live our life, that He looks at every second of the day and it's like 1,000 years. And 1,000 years is like one day. He can pass from 1,000 years to another 1,000 years. So He has 
all the time in His control. So if we follow God, if we live in God, then our life, our whole life will be in the hand of God. Now some, very often we think our life, you know, I don't know what's ahead of us. But now we know that our life is in the hand of God. Now even though, now if I use this to illustrate the length of my life, because God knew me ahead of time, so He has a plan. In this short life, He can use me greatly. I can do many things for God. I can do great things for God. So this is, you know, when we realize that God has already chosen us in eternity, that gives us the confidence. We are very, very special in God. Even though we live for a short time, that our life can be very precious and we can use our life to the maximum for God's glory. So God knew us in ahead of time. So this is God's nature and grace. First point. Second point. God did not just choose us. He called us by sending Christians to help us to believe in Jesus. He sent the Holy Spirit to move in our hearts to convert us. So He knew us ahead of time. And then He did not just chose us. He would call us with other Christians and with the Holy Spirit and with the Word of God to change our life to believe in Jesus. So He uh, put His election in action by calling us to believe in Jesus. Then He forgives us when we trust in Jesus as our Savior. So the next step is He forgives us and He glorifies us. He glorifies us by putting His Holy Spirit and His nature within us and He will totally transform us in heaven. So He will glorify us now and in heaven, He will totally con uh, transform us. So He starts to glorify us and change our life so that we can live out God's glory, live out the image of Jesus Christ, that we can, our life can be full of glory. So this Bible passage is very precious that, um, that his, uh, He has a wonderful plan in our life. He chose us ahead of, ahead of time. He wants to use our life mightily he want to do great things in our life and he's in control of everything all the situation are favorable to us to bless us to use us greatly so i hope this nature of god and his grace will motivate us to believe yes we are precious nothing can stop us from god's plan nothing can stop the blessings of god to come upon us nothing can stop us using our life to the maximum Okay, and then why many Christians don't trust in God and don't live out God's wonderful plan? Because many Christians don't study the Bible and they don't apply it to, to their lives. They look at the Bible verse and they not apply it. And many Christians look at life from human perspective. They just look at it from human's perspective and they did not look at it from God's perspective. God's perspective is that we are very precious. He already knew us in, uh, in eternity. He chose us. He sent His Son to die for us. He chose Christians to preach to us. He sent the Holy Spirit to, to change our life. And then He called us righteous uh, in Jesus Christ. And He transforms us. He glorifies us. Change our life totally. So, but many Christians just look at our life from a human perspective. And many Christians don't have a close relationship with God and don't follow God's plan. And so they don't live out God's plan because they, they don't have a close relationship with God. So they don't have strength and they just look at the problems. So they don't have strength and they never realize that they are very special. They are very important in God's plan. Okay, and then reminder and warning from God. When Christians don't trust in God's grace, they can lose their joy and their assurance in God. So when they don't trust in God, they lose everything. The God's plan doesn't come true in their life, that they don't get the benefit of God's plan. And many Christians don't conform to the image of Jesus and continue to live in sin. Destruction will come to their lives. John 5, 14, that Jesus said to the man healed of 38 years of sickness that he said sin no more or less the worst thing will happen to you so if we don't conform to Jesus image then the worst thing can happen to us 
and Satan can still kill and destroy our lives. So these are warning. If we don't live out, some people think, I just want salvation. I don't want to follow the perfect plan of God. They think that then, then they will get the best of two worlds. They can go to heaven and then they can get the benefit from the world. No, they will suffer. If we follow God, we'll be blessed by God. We'll have joy and strength. No matter when we are rich or poor, we still enjoy God. We have strength from God. And we'll enjoy serving God and enjoy blessing other people. And we can enjoy nature and joy every day. We enjoy our prayer. So when we follow God, we actually are blessed by God more. Okay, and then how? Very important, how? how we can receive and live out God's election for us. First, we trust in God's Word and believe and appreciate that God really predestined us to be a student. So we believe, trust. Yes, God has chosen me. God knew me before I was born. God knew me in eternity. He wanted to bless me already. He has a wonderful plan in my life. So trust that. Two, stop looking at our performance to determine our value in Christ. So don't say that, oh, I have failed, I have sinned, I have done many wrong things, so therefore God is not going to use me. Now, this, is, this is wrong. God wants to use us. God, even when we have weaknesses and sins, we ask God to forgive us and God is very happy to forgive us. So we say, Lord, I've sinned against you. I'm very sorry. Please forgive me. And God is very happy whenever we confess our sin and ask for forgiveness. He'll for sure forgive us. So we stop looking at a performance, but look at Christ who can forgive us and change us. Now, of course, if a Christian just stay in sins, for instance, they stay in lust or negative emotions or laziness, all these things will cause damage to his life, then, uh, you know, if a, part, a Christian continues sin, it's hard for him to have, to feel totally forgiven. He will feel he's worth nothing. So we don't want to live in sin because sins are destructive. We want to live in the joy of the Lord. We want to live in the strength of the Lord. We want to enjoy God and then bless people. And then God will be happy with us and bless our whole life. And then abide in Christ have a close relationship with God so that He will abide in us and cause us to bear much fruit, to be conformed to the image of Jesus. So we want to uh, have a close relationship with God so that He will, His life will flow through us that will bear much fruit and then we are conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Okay, so that was the one message that I hope that you see that um, that uh, it's not hard, it's not hard to write a message um, following this outline because it's 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 simple. You just follow it. So here again, the intro: how people don't live out or live out how people. Some people believe in God's predestination, God's wonderful plan, and then they. They have joy and strength. And then interpretation of the biblical passage and God's nature and grace to motivate us because God has that nature. He wants to give us that nature. He will help us to use that nature. He will provide a situation for us to use that nature. He will provide for us in every way. And He will appreciate us and reward us when we follow Him. And then why people don't live out? God's nature because of laziness or selfishness and reminder and warning from the, from the law and how we can live out God's nature and challenge to people. So for Romans 8.29, now here I just preach it as a, as a, uh, just as a message, okay? That the Bible tells us that God already knew us before we were born. God knew us in eternity that He already has a plan to save us. So we are very, very special people. Now, there might be people who say, well, I'm not chosen by God, therefore, even if I want to believe in Jesus, I cannot believe, I cannot be saved. Now, that's not true. If anyone hears the message of God and they want to believe, they will be saved. And these people are chosen. So some people think, well, 
the election of God will stop some people from believing. Actually, if they want to believe, everyone who wants to believe can be saved. They, if they want to believe, they just believe and then they'll be saved. They, they, God will not say, I did not choose you. There's no one that believes in Jesus and then God says, I haven't chose, chosen you, so you won't be saved. He won't say that to anyone. Because the Bible says that for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in, believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life, that they will not perish when they believe and trust in Jesus. So God chose us in eternity. And then uh, He predestined us uh, to... Uh, His plan is that we'll be conformed to the image of His Son. His plan is not just to save us. Now, some Christians have this image that God just wants to save people. Now, God wants to save people, but He wants to change, change people into the image of Jesus Christ, that they will live out the joy and the love and the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. He wants Christians to live like Jesus Christ. And then, so we can become Jesus' brothers. He is the firstborn, and then He will call us and He will justify us, He call us righteous, and then He will glorify our life. So He has a plan that we can really live out uh, the image of Jesus Christ. Now, so here I go through the message. Uh, I, I just flow in it. Now, these passages tell us a lot how precious we are. But many Christians don't see that. Many Christians just think that they are nothing, they are worth nothing, and they they have negative emotions, they are very unhappy, they are sad, depressed, and or they are controlled by sins and lust and greed and anger, and then they just have no strength, and they cannot live out the plan of God, and they totally don't believe that their life is spe uh, special. But the fact is, God did choose us. What God says in the Bible is always true. God did choose all the Christians and anyone who want to believe, who, anyone who believes in Jesus, they are chosen already. So we don't have to worry whether we are chosen or not. We just believe then we are chosen. And um, so God knew us ahead of time. He wants to save us and He has a plan to change our life. He has a plan to send the Holy Spirit and send Christians to save us and give us eternal life. And then He will change our life and glorify our life so that we will show the glory of God. So that is God's plan. God's plan is wonderful. And He will do all these things through the Holy Spirit and through the powerful Word of God that He will change people. Many people heard the Word of God and then they are changed by God and the Holy Spirit will move in our heart. And then when we believe in Jesus, we can experience that unspeakable joy. The joy will flow in our heart and we'll have joy and strength and we can enjoy every day. We have a close relationship with God and God's nature will flow through us. So as Christians, we can live in a joyful way, a peaceful way, and a fruitful way. Okay, so here I'm talking about the grace of God. But why don't many Christians live out this nature? Because many Christians just don't believe in the Bible. They don't believe in the promises in the Bible. And they don't have a, a close relationship with God or they are lazy. So they give up a lot of things. They thought they, they earned the world. They, they can gain the world by just working for them, you know, for money. Actually, you know, all this is in vain. Now, we should work. We should work. Our lives are not just for earning money. When we want to glorify God in everything we do, even when we work, we find ch chances, opportunities to tell people about Jesus, and God is very happy with that, and He will bless us. So, but many people don't see that. They are lazy, they don't want to live out God's plan, and they, and they think they are wise, but actually they are foolish. Okay, and then the warning. The warning is that when people don't live out God's plan, like in uh, Matthew 25, those who bury the gifts, uh, the talents, God has already given them the talents, but they bury it. They receive money, they receive the health and the provision from God and the salvation and the presence of the Holy Spirit. They receive all this, but they don't see that 
uh, these are these things are precious. So they uh, they buried the talents, and then Jesus said, "You are the the master said you are uh, lazy and wicked. You are wicked and lazy servant. Go into the outer darkness, where 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 there will be the gnashing of teeth." And then those who did not do to the little brothers of Jesus, they will go into the everlasting fire prepared for Satan and his angels. So when people don't follow God's plan, what happened to them is that they go, go into punishment and eternal damnation. So how? How can we live out God's plan? It's very simple. It's prepared for us already. So we believe, first, God has a wonderful plan. And we read the Bible and we hold on to it. And we pray to God and we have strength from God. And then we start to bless people, start to help other people, start to live out the peace and joy and strength of God. And then God is very happy with us and God will bless us. And when we go one step, then we go one step higher. When we can help one person, then we help two persons. When we can help two persons, we help three, four, five, and go on and so on. And so we keep helping people, keep expanding our life, keep expanding our ministry so that we can bless more, and pe more people. And then we can motivate people and tell them, you are very special. God already knew you. God chose you already. God sent the Holy Spirit to work in your life. And God strengthened you with the Holy Spirit and God will provide for you so that your life will go higher and higher and higher. So God had already has this wonderful plan and if we just trust in Him and pray to Him and obey Him step by step, we'll go higher and higher and higher. Okay? So we don't have to worry and we don't have to look at our weaknesses. If we have any weaknesses, then we just repent and ask God to forgive us and give us strength. And we plan to overcome those weaknesses. We plan to build up Christian qualities and our ministry to bless people and our joy every day and say, I've done this for God and God is very happy. God is blessing me. So, okay, so this is a past um, message I, I just give with this passage to encourage people that they can follow God totally and be blessed by God, okay? Now, if you have any question, you can ask me. Now, you, we will have a short break. Please come back and tell me that you are present and then we'll go to another passage, okay? If you have any question, please tell me, okay? God bless you, and I hope you are keen to learn, that really are motivated to learn. That this is one quality we have, that we can enter into this pre predestined plan of God, is to be diligent. When you are diligent, and you analyze the passage, and you see all these good qualities of the Bible passages, and then your heart will be opened up, your eyes will be opened up, and you can see the great things of God. And then you will, it will be easy for you to live out God's plan. It's not very difficult. It's not very difficult. So I hope that you understand this is not very difficult. And I hope you start to do assignments to raise up your, your ministry to a high level. Now many people, they preach just with the Lord. They just tell them you have to do this, do that then it's just pushing people to do it and then people will feel pressure but if we first tell them God is a wonderful plan your life is precious God already predestined you to conform to the image of God when you are conformed to the image of God then you are living out his glory then in God's sight you are glorious in the sight of the people of the world you are glorious that you are uh, that you will uh, glorify God and people will see you are so wonderful and they will they will uh, appreciate your life and they will accept your message. So I hope we all see that God's plan is so wonderful. I want to live out this plan and that's, that's the best for us. So this is motivation by grace. So I hope you all learn to do this because that is the teaching in the Bible. The Bible is not just about pushing people and warning people and yelling at people. Some people think we have to yell at people for them to change. Now, some people might say, okay, what if some people are lazy? We just tell them, you're lazy. You are letting Satan steal and kill and destroy your life. Do you want that to happen to you? Do you believe that? 
Do you believe that God can give you all blessings and Satan will only steal from you? And sins will only destroy your life. Sins will not bring good things to your life. Do you want to live in suffering and pain? Many people who don't follow God, they are suffering in pain. But when we follow God and have the joy of the Lord, we will be filled with strength. So it's, this is very important. Now, I have many other teachings. But when I see that you have done assignments, that you understand this teaching, then I will move on to other teachings. I have so many teachings God has given me. I want to teach more things. I don't want to stay here only. But since you have not given me assignments, I want to do it again so that you can learn this well. And so I demonstrate with all our more um, messages so that you can understand this fully. So, I, so if you understand this, please let me know. If you have any questions, please ask me. Okay, God bless you. So I will have a short break right now. Okay, bye-bye for now and please come back.